His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path as you follow your dreams. In a quiet North Carolina town, 22 miles south of Raleigh, as a young nine-year-old girl, Paige King Johnson spent her summers under crepe myrtles imitating the styles of Loretta, Patsy, Waylon, and Merle. Inspired by her grandfather, Paige followed her dreams to the bright lights of Music City in 2015 and found her voice when she attended Belmont University in Nashville. Along with her music, God laid another passion on her heart his land. This is her story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Paige, it's so good to sit down with you today on a rainy day in Nashville. You've been busy. Yes, I have. What is going on with you? Just uh, this year, really, I tell everybody, you know, January and February for touring artists are usually a little more low-key, but there really hasn't seemed to be any slowdown after the holidays. Um, I've been on the road pretty much every single weekend and making trips back and forth to Nashville to do work stuff and play shows here and write and record and all that kind of, you know, all the, the regular things that happen. So it's been very busy. Well, I looked at your tour list and it, you are packed. <laughs> you are on the road. As such a young artist, mm -hmm. tell me how, when you started, and are you living in Nashville or are you still in North Carolina? I'm back and forth between the two. I, I tell everybody I'm fortunate enough to have two really cool homes. <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, I do call Nashville home and I call North Carolina home. And, you know, I started playing music at a very young age. I was, I always say I was the kid that just needed attention. My mom loved um she always says that she loved being my mom and raising me as a kid because I was so vivacious and just all the time doing something and singing something or dancing in front of people just to try to bring joy to them. Are you the only child? <laughs> no, I'm not. But my older sister was very reserved, um, very much so just to herself. And so whenever I came along, they were like, what do we do with this kind just of kid? Just two of yours? Or... <laughs> just okay. two of us. But I grew up singing in church. I grew up playing at family um, barbecues and birthday parties, just anywhere and everywhere that people were and that they asked me to come and entertain for them. And so, you know, I learned at a very young age the value of being able to bring joy and entertainment to groups of people. And that was very important to me and still kind of what I take in my job. How old were you when you first performed? Well, I started playing guitar, I learned at the age of 10. So that was really probably my first official performance for people. But uh, if you asked my parents or my grandparents, I was performing for them in the back seat of the car every time the radio came on. <laughs> Were you a country music fan then? Yes, I grew up on a lot of classic country music. So a lot of Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline and Merle Haggard and all the greats. So I read that you would imitate them and Yes. So after that, what, what did you do? Well, I started learning guitar at 10. My grandpa bought me a guitar um, for Christmas that year, and he really wanted to kind of see. I'd been taking some piano lessons earlier, and so that was kind of my first formal introduction to music. And uh, he thought, well, what happens if we put a different instrument in this girl's hands and see what happens? And so uh, encouraged me to get into lessons, and that was really when I started falling in love with music um, and learning more about it and seeing what it could do for me, um, you know, not just internally, but how I could reach bigger audiences and, um, you know, try to spread joy in that way. And so that was really just what I clung to. And, you know, I kept going from there and never really looked back. 10 years old, yes. that's when it started. Mm -hmm. What were your teenage years like? <laughs> 
my mom would say probably nerve wracking at times. Um, I, I grew up on a farm in North Carolina. And so my teenage years were filled. That was really whenever I was trying to juggle both music being a huge passion of mine, but also um, agriculture in that whole world. I was in 4-H and FFA my entire childhood and I spent nearly every weekend at a horse show or at a lamb show with our family. We traveled all the time going to those and that was our whole world. Um, did you have horses growing up? We did. We always had at least one, um, but usually two or three that were roaming around the farm and I always had farm chores and you know, my daddy and my mama said that was what kept us out of trouble all the time. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you have a did you have a horse? I had a few over my childhood. I had a pony that was named Lester. He was kind of my starter project, as my parents would say. And then I graduated up to a horse um, named Buddy. And then my sister and I shared a horse um, named Butterbean, the most country name for an animal ever. And then. My last show horse name was Bubba, and he was the best thing ever, and it broke my heart whenever I moved to Nashville to have to give him or, or sell him off to another family that would still be able to use him and, and get the, the good out of him. Did you have any trials or issues in high school that, or the typical teenage issues? Um, I wasn't a problem child. Uh, my parents, you know, they, they gave us enough projects to be able to keep us out of trouble. And I think that's important, don't yeah, you think? Yeah, we were very active, you know, between being active in our 4-H groups, our family has always been a very close-knit family. We did everything together, um, which I'm so grateful for looking back on now. And we were very active in our church and our youth group. And so between all that, you know, my parents were always were in the mindset of, if you have enough, the, t enough things to do, enough responsibilities, enough good people around you, then less bad things can come in. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for that childhood um, that they, you know, created for us. Well, tell me a little bit about your faith. I grew up in a faith-filled home from the very beginning. Um, we, uh, our Baptist church, which is where my dad went ever since he was little, and uh, my mom joined whenever her and him got married, and that's always been my home church. And uh, it was literally a quarter mile down the road. So on days whenever my parents weren't home and couldn't take me to church, I could walk to church. Um, and I was there pretty much every Wednesday night for youth group, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night. And I'm so grateful to have that community that really helped raise me um, and helped kind of get me to where I am now, both in music and just in life in general. And I, I wouldn't be here without them and, and the things that they allowed me to be able to do. Do you remember the time that you made that decision to give your life to the Lord? Yes, I do. Uh, my mom and I were actually just talking about this the other day um, when my sister and I decided we wanted to join our home church. And um, my dad decided then that uh, he was going to get baptized with us. And it was just such a special moment. And I will never, ever forget that. And it just it still holds so true in me. I was about seven or eight. I can't remember the exact time, but it was it was pretty young in my life. And I knew that like, you know, there's just something that comes over you that just keeps telling you and keeps telling you. And I tried to fight it off for a little while and it was just something that I knew had to happen and was meant for me. So it's beautiful that you and your dad and your sister mm -hmm. baptized all, all together. together. That's beautiful. You know, I heard that um, at the age of 10, you got that guitar and you were so excited about it because it was from your grandfather. Yes. And there was a challenging time after that, and we're gonna talk about it when we come back. Paige, you told me earlier that your grandfather gave you that guitar at the age of 10. It was so special to you, and he saw something in you. What happened after you got the guitar? Well, he was the first person who really pushed me to start taking guitar lessons and kind of explore that different side of music for me and see what that could do. And loved, loved, loved every week after I had guitar lessons, he would, I would go, my parents would take me over to his house and I'd have to show him what I had learned. And um, that was right around Christmas and the following Easter, um, he got very, very sick and ended up passing away. And now, how old were you at this time? 
I was I was still 10. It, it was, you know, very quickly after that. And that was really hard. My papa and I were very, very close. And um, he loved seeing the joy on my face whenever I was, you know, exploring that world of, of music and guitar and all that kind of thing. And so he has kind of since then always been my push and my inspiration and the reason why behind the music um, and chasing a dream from the very beginning, because I know that he would have loved to kind of see all the different stages and all the things that have happened since then. Was this the first time you dealt with somebody dying in your life? It was. Somebody, you know, it was the first time that I was old enough to really realize what was happening and really truly feel that loss. Um, and it was hard, especially being so close and seeing, it was my, my dad's father, um, you know, seeing him go through that, that was his second parent that he had lost. And so, um, it was, it was hard. How did you deal with it? You know, as a kid, I think it's different than being, you know, a more mature adult, but, um, there were a lot of there was a lot of family time right there at the beginning. Thankfully, my parents realized that, um, you know, even as ten and my sister was fourteen at the time, that there needed to be some time away from school to just kind of deal with it as a family and and really go through that, um, go through the motions of everything that happens when there is a death in the family. And so that was very treasured to me. And and we took a lot of time kind of reflecting on everything and going through stuff at the house. And my parents shared all kinds of memories and, you know, going through a lot of pictures. And that really was a very therapeutic thing for all of us to be able to kind of have good closure and good memories to, to cap off a very dark time in that. And you have that precious gift that he gave you mm -hmm. with you always. Yes. Do you still use that guitar? I do. I, I, people ask me all the time, they're like, you would never get rid of that guitar. I'm like, there is no money in the world worth at that guitar. Um, do you use it on stage any? I don't. It was a, so for guitar nerds, it was a baby tailor because I was so young at the time that I couldn't get my arms around a big guitar. So it is a mini version of a guitar. So I don't use it on stage, but I will play around with it and, and bring it out from time to time. I can very much so feel him in it whenever I do play it. So um, it's a very important piece to me. So from there and your teenage years, but then you came to Nashville. Yes, Tell right after that. high school. Um, I, I'd set my eyes on Nashville whenever I was about a sophomore in high school. That was really when the switch flipped for me and I realized that music was, you know, what I was supposed to do and what I loved and what my passion was. And so I started looking into Nashville and I found Belmont University here in Nashville, Tennessee, and coming from a Christian home and having that cushion of, you know, moving from a very small town to a big city is a scary thing. But knowing that I was going into a Christian community that was full of people who could support me in that and be there for me was very comforting for me. And I fell in love with Nashville when I visited here the first time and fell in love with Belmont and everything that they had there between the music business program that I attended, but also just the community and the possibilities of, you know, what could happen within my career in music um, and developing in faith as I kind of grew along with that. At that time, were you connected with people in the Christian or uh, country music or Christian music industry or no? I really knew nobody when I moved to Nashville, um, which I think is, you know, quite a lot of people's stories that we just have a dream and we have a hope and and that is so powerful that we're willing to step completely out of the box into a new situation and just put ourselves out there and have to see what comes of it and that was very much so my experience i had a couple of friends from back home who had been to belmont um, from time to time and so those were a couple of connections that I could lean on if I really got in a tough spot and needed somebody. But really, it was just starting from ground zero and building up from there. So your focus when you came to Belmont was just your education. Mm -hmm. So you were focused on that. You weren't really pursuing contracts or anything like that. Right. I, I knew that, you know, not everybody gets this time to... Uh, really focus on this and develop and figure out what they want to do before then they jump into it. And my parents told me from the very beginning, they said, when you go to school, your job is to be a student and we want you to That's focus good. on that. We want you to take in as much as you can. We want you to learn and not have the stress of, you know, pursuing a career on top of being a student or pursuing a career on top of trying to find yourself. Cause there's a lot of, you know, self, 
uh, reflection and all that kind of stuff that happens when you move away and you go to college. And so I was fortunate to have that kind of environment and that stress taken away when I moved here. And so obviously there was chiseling away at, you know, becoming a better writer and uh, meeting new people and trying to make connections. But as far as stress of moving here and you have to make it in three months, that wasn't a thing for me, which I'm so grateful for. And I really feel like that opened the doors for organic relationships to happen and people to fall into place that were supposed to be in my life um, that the Lord could bring to me at times, which I'm so, so grateful for. Did you have any challenges while you're in college? I mean, absolutely. I think everybody, when they move away for the first time, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's homesick and and finding yourself, but also, um, you know, there's the new temptations of being on your own and that newfound freedom and, and trying to figure out, you know, okay, now I have this whole world in front of me, um, you know, what can happen? And so coming from a very close family and then being 550 miles away from them was a huge challenge for me and something that I had to start navigating myself and figuring out. Um, but I was very fortunate to have a lot of people um, established very early on here in Nashville that were a good community for me and um, supporting me in that and kind of, you know, helping figure out and navigate the roads, which was a blessing. Well, you know, I love how the Lord has given you the desires of your heart and you are just taking off in your career in music, and we're gonna talk about it when we get back. Paige, your career is really taking off. You are so booked on dates. Let's talk about it. Well, it has. I mean, right now we're working a single at Country Radio called Why God Made Small Towns, and we just put out a music video for it, and we're touring right now, playing all kinds of shows, and it really, sometimes I'm like, wait, okay, what day it is? What what day is it? What is happening? <laughs> well, what when did it start? Because you were in college, you graduated, and then what happened? Right. I started doing music full-time in 2019, and so that was really when I started recording all of my first music. I put out an EP um, that year, which was really exciting, my first official work of music out into the world, and uh, started writing a lot and touring that year and went on radio tour with my first single at Country Radio. And then 2020 happened, sadly, and so um, I was off the road for a very long time and really just focused on writing, which was all I could do. Then once things kind of started opening up and into 2021, I was grateful to be able to get back out on the road. And it really, uh, it's just been all gas, no breaks since then, which I'm grateful for. Well, in the midst of it, you got married. Yes. Were, what year was that? It was, we got married April of 2022. We're coming up on our on our first anniversary, which first is crazy. anniversary in yes. the midst of all of this. Yes. I know, I was crazy, but it had to happen. We were so in love. Well, how did you meet your husband? We met at a concert, actually, which is the most cliche thing for an artist to ever say. Um, over spring break, when I was back at home in North Carolina, and uh, had never known each other, had never met each other before, and um, truly just saw something in him. And so I was leaving the next day to come back to Nashville, and he was in North Carolina, and we kept in contact over the next couple of months. And then when I went home for uh, summer break that year, uh, he took me out on a date, and there was no looking back after that. <laughs> and how long after that did you get married? We were together almost five years before we got married. So all throughout the time that I was in college and, and getting on my feet in music. And it's just, he's the best and the biggest supporter and, um, you know, just a gift, truly a gift. Well, tell me about the uh, song, God, what is it? God Why made, God Made Small Towns. What was the inspiration behind that song? My friend and I, Mike, we write together a lot. And we wrote the song actually during the very thick of the shutdown in 2020. And we were FaceTiming. And I was back in my hometown in North Carolina. And we were just kind of talking about the way that we were raised and the places that we were raised. And um, he grew up in a small town in Missouri and mine in North Carolina. And even though we grew up thousands of miles away from each other, I think everybody's experience in those small communities is kind of the same of, you know, being in places of, you know, very familiar places and people who are just rooting for you and whatever you're doing and supporting your dreams and 
that's not something that you can recreate all the time. And I'm just so grateful for being raised in a small community like that, that um, is full of people that I've been able to lean on throughout my entire life and who have supported me from the beginning. Will you play a little bit? Yes, absolutely. They're just a few square miles from one line to the other. They're mighty in heart, they're mighty small in number. And they welcome everybody from sun up to sun down. That's why God made small towns. They're nestled in every corner from coast to coast. Full of everyday people with dreams and hopes. Putting in hours to help the world keep spinning round. That's why God made small towns to have a family and raise them up, to have a place to land when you're down on your luck. Live for Friday night at Sunday church and heal everything with just a little dirt. They wanted a special place where the lost can get found. Yeah, that's why God made small town. I love it. <laughs> they are truly special places, and um, I think there is a reason why God took a little extra time making those places. I love those. I love the small town. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Nashville and how it's growing? It is. But you know what? I've heard from the very beginning, whenever I moved here, this is a big city with a small town feel. and It really is. It truly is, especially being in the entertainment industry. You tend to run into the same people, and it truly does make you feel like you're in this small community within this craziness of a big city. <laughs> it's so true. Sometimes you'll run into people and they know this person mm -hmm. and that person. It's, it really is yes. a small town, but it's a small world too. It is. It truly is. So you've received a couple awards recently. <laughs> yes. Uh, back in January at the Carolina Country Music Awards, I was awarded Single of the Year for my song, Baby Don't, which I know you were talking about earlier. What, what's behind that song? It was, uh, it's actually an outside song. So I was not a writer on this song, but uh, Pam Tillis sent it to me and she knew I was working on an album at the time and she found this song from some writers here in Nashville and uh, really thought that it would be a good fit for me and I fell in love with the energy and the, you know, just the, the fun sing-alongness of the song. Well, how did you get connected with Pam Tillis? I still question that from time to time, but um, she heard my song at the time called Just Like You that we were working on. Um, it was a nice little love song I wrote about my husband and uh, she fell in love with my voice and really believed in me as a songwriter. And so she ended up uh, reaching out to my team here in Nashville and just kind of wanted to be involved in whatever way possible and ended up becoming the producer for three of my recent music videos. And, you know, it's just crazy to have somebody who you looked up to as, you know, an idol and, and you know, somebody who you want to base your career around. Um, to now call them a friend and a mentor, and that's Isn't just that amazing. amazing. You know, I love how women encourage other women. Yes, and you she know, does that. You know, especially as famous and as that she is, but she sees that in you. Yes, and I'm, and I think we all should do that, don't you? Absolutely. Think? I mean, she's all about you know reaching down and helping the next person up, and it's just I wish there were more people like her in the industry and just in the world in general because she is truly a light. I love that. So tell me what's going on next for you. Well, we're continuing to just play all kinds of shows this year. We're playing a lot of new places. I always uh, challenge myself to play one new state every year. And so this year we're playing Montana for the first time, which I'm excited about. And just continuing to, the song has a, lo a long ways to go at Country Radio and hoping that that continues to reach new people and the story and, and the message of the song continues to um, reach people's hearts and uh, then kind of see where it goes from there. Well, Paige, I am just so honored and 
excited that I got to sit down yes. with you today. Thank you for having me. And I pray that you just, huge success for you. Thank you. And I know you're going to be there. <laughs> Fingers and crossed. And very soon. <laughs> My friend, do you have a small town dream? The Lord knows the desires of your heart. Trust Him. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith.